Today I'd like to go over some concerns about sequential art layout. Typically, if you're laying out sequential art, you're usually working with a longish vertical format, and there's some standard ways to kind of break up the space. <coughs> One of the most common ways is you see people um, divide this up into quadrants, and basically what you wind up with are four smaller versions of that page. And it sort of echoes that format. It's easy to read. It just goes one, two, three, four, left, right, top to bottom. Another typical way that you see is everything divided into uh, three tiers. So you wind up with six panels read exactly the same way, left to right, top to bottom. And that can convey a lot of information on one sheet, especially when you're just doing minor elements to the story. But sometimes when you want to set something up or emphasize something, you need to break it up. Typical ways are to take the top third, make it full bleed, and then do quadrants under that. So you kind of get this square at the bottom. Other ways, you see three full bleed rectangles. You also see three rectangles going top to bottom, uh, but with um, without the bleed, with a little border around the edge. And that's good for large moments that are kind of stable in their timeline and action. But what if you wanted to create a progression? You could also take that same idea and offset them uh, just a little bit so you create this diagonal progression through the story and it gives a little bit of dynamism. So if there's uh, some amount of dynamism in the story, you'd want that to be echoed in the layout. Um, because the layout really is the primary generator of the way that the story is going to be read. Um, Another thing this does is it does something to the positive and negative shapes. Typically, your panels are what everybody's looking at, but around that, when you start playing with uh, dynamism and offset, you create these odd negative shapes. So then you have a concern about what to do with that. If you take a different layout where you have these long panels going left to right across a spread, um, that changes everything because now you have a 50-50 relationship between positive and negative space. You could imagine cramming all of those panels on the one page and they would take it up completely and then you'd have a blank page. One of the ideas a lot of people do is they fill up the negative space with black. So let's try that and see what that looks like. If we go over and take a, a brush tool and kind of cover up all the space around these panels on one side, you can see this is hugely different in its effect because no matter what you put inside those three panels, it's going to be heavily offset and emphasized by that dark black area. <coughs> Other things to think about is if you have a large scene and stuff going on in that scene, you could use the background element being like more or less a landscape of the scene, and your foreground panels could be something going on within that scene. So you can essentially use it to do double duty where you're kind of creating the environment and showing something going on in the environment. So as you think through these, think about um, how to be efficient and how to compress as much information into each page as possible. But you also want to be sure that you're telling the story properly and that you're not skipping something. So using all these visual tools can help you emphasize what the story itself is doing. So. Other things to think about is we're echoing what goes on with a normal paragraph. So you can think of each of your uh, segments as part of a chapter, part of a paragraph, a sentence. And these sentences have to relate. So if sentences clash, you would want to create a layout that clashes. If they harmonize, you would want to create a layout that harmonizes. If you're setting up a scene, you want to, you want to uh, be sure that you're setting that up properly. Now, typically in storytelling, you want to set something up, right? So let's say that this guy is about to go answer the door. <coughs> He's sitting and reading. And you, you typically, an old school comic way to indicate a change in the setup is to interrupt the action. Um, a lot of old comics, they would write a uh, onomatopoeic word um, like the word knock. And then that would interrupt the action so that you know that there's an auditory interruption and the character would turn and look. More efficiently, you could also just have the character turn and look at the page. And then it would be logical to show what this character is actually looking at, right? You would potentially show the door. 
um, and uh, specifically the doorknob. And then maybe they ignore that. Maybe they go back to reading. Maybe they continue to look at the door. But if they continue to look at the door, if you show the door again, that's really boring because you've just repeated the exact same action. So you want to change it. Maybe this guy's old and has trouble or has trouble getting up out of the chair. And so you show him actually getting up out of the chair. So you set up an expectation, set up a little rhythm and repetition, and then you break it. <coughs> but I want you to think of other ways to do this. You don't have to do the standard way. One of the things you could do is kind of show a wider view of this person's apartment. And you could have the setup panel be the entire top section. And you show them reading. Maybe you show the, their, a little window or, some, or something like that. And then maybe you show the door in the frame, just barely. Right? So that kind of sets all the scene and all the potential for the action. Then maybe you kind of create a smaller segment and you focus in on the guy looking over at the door. And then your right panel could be a totally different approach. It could be this long door and it's just a straight on view of the door and maybe the door has some elaboration to it uh, or some or something interesting maybe it's a special door um, and then you could create the last couple of panels of him going back to reading maybe and then saying oh, i'm gonna get up so you have created a whole different scene out of the same action uh, just by choosing a different layout. And that's what I want you guys to think about. I want you to break away from traditional story structures that you know and try to create a synthesis between the story and the image and layout. <laughs>